Welcome. I'm Alice Alicia Jones, and this is another one of my Living Consciously videos. Uh, today is the week before Thanksgiving, and this is probably one of my favorite subjects, channeling. Channeling is simply communicating with beings that are non-physical. They're receiving information from them, non-physical beings, and it doesn't, hi, Michelle, glad you're here. Um, it doesn't matter whether these are beings that are extraterrestrial, are ascended masters. It doesn't matter when they lived. It doesn't matter if they are part of your um lexicon of beings I loved, you can virtually communicate with anything. And but today I'm I'm just going to review with you the type of beings that are the probably the easiest to receive messages from, whether you think so or not, because the the beauty is that you're going to get to a point where you're going to realize you can communicate with your furniture, with your car, with your, you know, plants outside, inside, with anything that you want. It all has consciousness. It all is part of one great arena of consciousness. Beings in spirit that have a relationship to you, like someone who has passed over, that, uh, and in some cases, it can even be that it was difficult, you that you had a difficult relationship with them, and you want to know why. Uh, you want to get their perspective now that they're in spirit. So you can ask them questions. And first of all, you have to set the stage. You have to get into a very quiet place and just bring your level of energy to a place that is beyond doubt, beyond any type of of your ego mind giving you any kind of problems. Your ego mind coming in and saying, you can't do that. What? It, who do you think you are? What do you think you are? You can't do that. Get out of that space. So I recommend that you sit very quietly in a place that you might normally sit very quietly in, have your pad of paper, your pencil, your ballpoint, whatever whatever you love to write with. And I have found that gel pens write very, very smoothly, very quickly, very easily. So I generally, if I'm channeling, I generally like to use gel pens. And in the event that I ever want to use the material for a book, it's I recommend that you write only on one side of the paper. Because Every one of you that is attracted to this information is eventually, I feel spirit has already tapped your mind and is, is already telling you now that this is important, pay attention, and that your words, whatever you're going to bring forward, is going to be important in the future is going to be important for other people to know. It's the, the concept is the four minute mile. Once it, they, as long as the attitude held, no one can do it. No one did it. Once a, one person did it, 20 did it. Now I think 200 have done it. 400 have done it. It's not impossible to bring information from beings in spirit. First of all, you've got to give up your doubt. You've got to give up the fact that 
you don't think that's possible. So I just so encourage you just to do a little ritual for yourself. Light a candle. Put some soft music in the background. If soft music uh, interferes with your thought processes, just go into the silence. I never have music. It doesn't matter if I'm doing healings, readings, or uh, or any kind of meditative uh, exercise. But I know the times I've attended classes where music has been played, um, that was also very comforting. But light a candle. Have essential oils, at least one that you absolutely love. Essential oils, you don't have to have frankincense. That costs anywhere from $75 to, to $150 a vial, depending upon who you buy it from. You can have lavender. That You can get that for like 10 bucks. You can have lemon. You can have grapefruit. You can have uh, some very inexpensive essential oils. Rosemary is, is for clarity. Um, just wonderful, wonderful way to bring a scent in. Do some toning for yourself. Hum, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Hum, sounds, sa, ha, ma, fa, la, da, ra, the Buddhist sounds. Get yourself into a place where you are drifting into mindlessness, or you could say mindfulness. Either, either one will work. And then start to visualize the person sitting across from you. Put them in an easy chair. Put the little dog, the little puppy, the the animal that, that you treasure uh, at your feet, next to you, on the couch, wherever, and allow it to just open a conversation up with you. Introduce yourself to it. Most of the time, they'll be so happy to know that you're making this attempt that they're going to start yipping and yapping and and purring and and whatever they do. Um, it could be a bird. There's a lot of birds that I've, I've run into recently. Uh, every once in a while, uh, two, one or two cardinals will come to the window, look at me, kind of kind of poke around. I know it's my mom, and when there's two, it's my mom and my dad. But typically, it's the little brownish reddish one. So I know that's my mom. Um, she absolutely loved cardinals. And um, just sit quietly, calm yourself down, calm everything, uh, and, and start breathing deeply. And then just say, I'm here to listen. Tell them that you are willing to listen to whatever it is that they have to tell you. And if you don't feel anything coming forward, start asking questions. How are you doing? What are you doing? Are you happy? Do you have friends? Are you with somebody special? Who are you hanging around with? Where have you been recently? These are all questions that are so relevant to their lives, they will absolutely love telling you what it is that they're doing. And it was amazing how when I led a class of over 20 people um, uh, at the Intuitive Wellness Center, how many people got wonderful messages from their animals from their beloved pets that had crossed over. The pets are going to be the first thing that you will see when you cross over because they're going to run through the barriers. There's, there's not going to be a barrier that's going to hold them. 
they're going to run through and they're going to be there for you. And it's going to just make it so much easier for you. So many people that have crossed over temporarily, the um, NDEs, the near-death experiences, so many people have come back with the messages of the fact of who greeted them first. And typically it was an animal or many times I should say it was an animal. Uh, even when they had a contentious relationship with somebody, many times that person was there. So I know when I suggested to my sister, Mary, who is an absolute doubter, she's a scientist. So she, you know, total left brain. Um, when she did this and I said, I know you have some questions. So she called uh, an uncle, a, a, a man who had been a favorite uncle, who had done something that she thought was not in her best interest. And so she had a dialogue with him and she got answers to her questions. And she, after that experience, put it this way, I didn't get quite as much resistance from her whenever I spoke about spirit. Because I can remember there was a time when I used, very early in this, when I used the word energy, and she just kind of freaked out. And she said, can't we just have a normal conversation? And so um, anyway, but the best thing for you to do, show up at the same time, in the same place. Have consistency in what you're attempting to do because it's that consistency that is going to then bring the beings to you. If you feel you really didn't get anything the first time, try again with another being. Under no circumstance do I ever want you to feel you don't deserve to talk to an ascended master like St. Michael or St. Gabriel or St. Raphael or Jesus or Mary, that they are so far above you that, that you don't have the right to call on them, to talk to them. You have every single right. And don't hold anything against yourself. Don't say, well, I did this. I did drugs. I did, I, you know, ran around. I uh, self-medicated with alcohol. I hated everybody that uh, raised me. It doesn't matter. You came here for a purpose. And Effectively, you're fulfilling that purpose with the different facets of your life. Whether you know it or not, you, the spirit has a way of channeling their efforts into helping you fulfill what it is that you came here to do. I would absolutely love to hear um, you can email me or uh, I, however you want. You can do it on Messenger. And uh, you can bring the, um, uh, you can bring the energy of anybody that you want. Anybody. And I would love to hear your ex about your experience. So if you want to message me on Messenger, I will publish it uh, because I won't see you next week because it's Thanksgiving weekend and I'll be hosting uh, my daughter and son-in-law. But um, I will uh, see you the following Friday and I will publish any remarks that I feel uh, would benefit the, the group. So uh I would absolutely love that. And I am going to uh, be very, very grateful to see if you can't 
get to a space. And typically, if you just see yourself rising out of the third dimension through the fourth, the fourth is time. So we've we've already been through that. Into the fifth, that's where Mother Earth is ascending to. Through the sixth, the fifth dimension is still has some negativity attached to it. The sixth, no negativity exists. Seventh, eighth, ninth, however high you can, you feel you can go and leave your negative baggage outside the door so that it doesn't block you from doing this exercise. And I, I wish you certainly a wonderful holiday. Uh, I have a special running on my book. So go to my website, www.alicia, A-L-I-C-J-A, jones.com, and a contest running on my book. So please um, do have a wonderful Thanksgiving next week, and I will see you in two weeks. Thank you for being here, and I'm very, very grateful to have you. Thank you.